Good evening and welcome to another edition of Talk Pixar. As Papua New Guinea's economy continues growing and as we hear much about the positive effects of economic development, there is another side to this story. It's a story of ordinary people who have become victims of urban poverty. The Lay's second seven dump has been serving a mere population of people who earn their living through rubbish that comes from Lay's industries. Despite the obvious health risks, many of them haven't made up their minds to leave, mainly because of the money they make from selling off what they find at the dump. One of the fastest growing towns in Papua New Guinea. Its estimated population 500,000 men, women, and children, but that is expected to increase over the next few years. Lei is the hub of PNG's economic growth. In the next two years, it will be the home of one of the biggest ports in the South Pacific. Lay City roads have been upgraded and a four-lane highway will be built from Lay to Najab to reduce traffic congestions. But these scenarios hide a big secret within. It's a story that hasn't been much talked about for many years. It's a reality facing many other towns and cities in Papua New Guinea and Lay only gives you a glimpse of it. On the one end of Lay City, along the Bumayong back road area, is the city's biggest rubbish dump. It's 10 a.m. in the morning, and Tamaya Mineyu is already at the dump site, collecting feed for pigs at home. Tamae, who is now in her 50s, says she's been here for the past 34 years. She scavenges through this pile of rubbish every day to look for waste food and other edibles that she can bring back to her family. Like Tamae, nearly a hundred more other families sift through tons of rubbish every day that come from Lay's industries. Many have come and settled here a long time ago and have called this place their home. But it's more than just their home, they say. Ricky Bruno is another deep dweller. Every morning and afternoon, he sets through huge piles of rubbish for scrap metals and other valuables that can be resold to recyclers in Lay to generate an income for his family. So, Like Ricky and Tamae, they are part of a small community of about 500 men, women and children who live off the rubbish that comes from lace industries. Many of them don't have a formal job. They also chose to live illegally on this land that many of us might see as health hazards. <laughs> Illegal protein number can be chelo dam. 
So kita bilang kalau plan itu dengan lilik ni dengan mika ada yang boleh mikut gibran dan mikul orang lain. Dalam siapa sih mika selalu guna soal mama saya kan nak bumbu nak orang mandiri saya kan bumbu mika mangi jam belum mantu mika sepai ni arlo. Si kaya lo pig nasi lagai nampot. Dan perlu gua sembilan orang ni nasi lagai tu mula saya pilih sembilan gua sana segi nasi lagai nampot. So mula saya special lor nak dari maksim gua nak saya ikat time belum belakang mula saya segi maksim. Many people living here have refused to leave despite the health risks. Although they understand that they are illegal settlers, they know there's a much bigger problem that awaits them out there if they are to live. The Lay Urban Local Level Government wants to relocate Lay City's biggest dump due to health concerns. Constant rain and flooding has increased the risk of waterborne diseases for nearby residents. But the task of relocation and landfilling will take several months. In recent years, many more small communities continue to emerge around dumps in other towns and cities in Papua New Guinea as more and more people try to accommodate the growing pressure of urban poverty. It is one of the places widely heard of, but largely ignored. But good money are working here. Plenty of people are working bigger around, but time will come in and they will go to Salim and they will get money. All the busy people around and nothing outside and they will get money. They will get money and they will get money. Plenty of people are all Salim and the company, but I think it's best to go to the government and think because they don't have to fund them. All these are huge here. We said stop the surrounding the dump area. We put in one recycling one of them here. Machine where we can all it can work. Maximum something or recycling here. Can you see one of the youth project long all? And but much better because tiny old MPs all the time look to vote in certain this area. These are people who stop all certain close to here. But then all put in one kind of project was them. All it can work in recycling now. All can come up money so one of the kind youth group long all. For the people who live here, almost all of them are here for the same reason. And almost all of them have one thing in common. Their confidence in the government has dipped over the last 34 years. Plenty of years, I have a lot of years, so the government has a lot of years. I have a lot of years, 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 I have a lot of years. The youths agreed to show me how they earn their living through this rubbish that come from lace industries. Many of them have refused to speak on camera about their lives here, but their story it's just the same. Time we around nothing. We have plenty crimes. We must have more to plenty problems with the penis. So we be looking more same normal. My heart will be black. We be coming against the dam. We be looking at life. We be seeing we be against. So we be looking at little scrape inside there. So we be looking at okay. We know I'm black. Money in a blow. We be looking buy one. At least we be looking at some thirty, fifty, forty. Calm down. We be looking at looking at penis smoke boy now. Can can we be survive there? We be around. Can we survive? Earlier last month, the Lay Urban Authority says the dump can no longer hold the amount of rubbish that Lay City is producing, and they propose that the dump must be shut down permanently. If we can do a, a better costing about this dump, uh, it will go up to some millions to at least get it done properly. Uh, uh, we need uh, the machinery to at least get the dump improved to the expected uh, levels and uh, to the commission and to put it properly so it become a recreation park or so, uh, before we move, move into another dump site. The authority, meanwhile, is negotiating with the provincial government to relocate the dump. There's only one dump site that we have in Lay. The second seven dump has been here for the past 35 years. It's the only dumping ground for all the garbages coming from Lay City. Uh, there was no recognition of uh, the volume of waste that we actually produce in the city. Uh, it is in big volumes now. And now with the current situation that we have, we've got only one dump site and it's overfilled. And unfortunately, we ran into a bigger problem. That's when we started to at least uh, have 
a management decision to at least see that uh, there must be some uh, uh, machines engaged to at least make some clearance. Uh, then that's exactly why, why we are having this machine, is basically to uh, have some holes uh, dark so that we can have the, the waste that is actually just lying all over the place to be put into the hole so that it can be covered properly. The odor from the waste is unbearable and when it rains, all the garbage is washed into the residential areas. Several attempts by the Lay City Authority to relocate the people have been unsuccessful. They said the government needs to provide better options if they are to move. Mr. Pinsali, I'm Ms. Kelly Mulsem, I'm a senior lookout in Pigna, paying school fee. Because Unitech now has cost me 4,500 kina, one year, paying school fee. Now, Ms. Kelly Mulsem, I look out in Pigna, I see. I'm a senior lookout in Pigna, I'm a senior lookout in Pigna, I'm a senior lookout in Pigna. So, I'm a senior lookout in Pigna, I'm a senior lookout in Pigna, I'm a senior lookout in Pigna. So I'm best to look out in Pigna, save him Pigna. If you dump the plastic and you don't have to pick him money, you don't have to pick him to your money. So I'm going to live in my life and I'm going to The former Lay City manager, Roy Kamen, says this will change in the next few months. Uh, we will still negotiate with the provincial government and with, maybe with the national government for some funding assistance to try and uh, overcome the situation and try to uh, relocate this dump to a new, new location. To five miles, it was uh, previously uh, discussed between the provincial government and the authorities in Leh. Carmen says it's now the job of the Leh urban local level government to find a solution to it. But he says, to a large extent, it also needs support from other stakeholders in the city. garbage tip isn't easy to build. To make this happen quickly, Lay's urban local level government will need funding from both the provincial and national government. The former Lay city manager meanwhile says they have been having difficulty convincing the provincial and national government to fund the relocation of the dump. The Lay city council tries to maintain this dump but it cannot because uh, it relies very much on its uh, internal revenue. Uh, to try and uh, sustain its operations. We get the assistance from the national government and the provincial government, but they don't come uh, in a timely manner. And this delays the whole process of us trying to deliver services to our, to our ratepayers and to, to the people of the city. He says a proposed relocation of the dump will be tabled at the provincial assembly, the Tutumang. Other methods of waste disposal will be talked about to contain lace waste and garbage problems. With Leh projected to be the economic hub of Papua New Guinea, there are hopes that more job opportunities may become available for ordinary Papua New Guineans, such as those living at Leh's second seven dump. Many who live there are hoping for the better, that one day their lives will change. But all that may take several more years. The stench smell of the compost meat and burning rubbish reveals the bad condition of the area. But the dump has some positive stories too. Now, while many may consider this place as an unsafe and unhealthy environment to live in, those who live and fend off the rubbish say they make more money above PNG's minimum wage rate. 
Donald Olmo agrees to show me his home and his piggery, one of the success stories from the dump. No man buy him, so buy him. No, mag no magi, so five hundred, one thousand two hundred, one thousand no, two thousand five hundred. Then me bless him. Mag him so, so man go buy him. Sixty. Me sorry, me so me buy him. Me sit right side door. Me eight, no ma pa me. No picking the blue me, no me stop. So come on, me so me so me bless the guy no say road. Me pass a good so go sato. The time, the time. So come and say delay in time, blum blum blum. Black and extend him some blouse, blum blum blum. This man, slagain. Over the last two years, the number of people who chose to come and live here has increased, and that have been largely driven by the growing number of unemployment and the high cost of living in the city. We sell in big mall. We build them some house. The money we keep. So mattress, so kapa, and so on, so on. So to me, no kapa, so I'm not buying this man. So I'm not selling this house. I'm costing almost three hundred billion dollars. I'm costing seven thousand. 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 Future people say you chill, not stop them. Maybe life spent on this dump too, but not stop long the time. So for city, I'm not coming, not coming in that mood, not time for any such dump. But all these people are going to go because there's nothing, nothing to sustain more long the future. Because plenty of them, beginning born, all this stuff, now people go lapu, now stop the air. Now that's their way to live. So I want to something where me think also, I'm a good player. Government must have a certain plan now. Because life span is a dump and we come close to the penis bone. The city will long extend. Now I suppose we go penis this long line by one future long New development means new challenges. As Papua New Guinea struggles to provide basic services to its people, it's having to contend with growing communities living in its rubbish tips. We have a dilemma now because usually in most cases a city council is supposed to take ownership of the dump site area collects the rubbish from the city and if that's the allocated area I'll go throw my rubbish low up. But we don't have an existing city council. Um, it's got its issues. So really what needs to be had now is a consultation between the provincial government, between the uh, provincial administration, the district administration because this facility here is in Lay District, our LOs and a kind of partnership entered into so that our LOs are empowered. They don't have to live at the dump site. They can be relocated to Arapla ground that is not there because it's a health risk. And our good people that are living there, surely they, they don't have to live there. We can replace them, or I mean rather relocate them somewhere else. About 10 kilometers away is the provincial capital, Lei the city that is projected to be one of Papua New Guinea's biggest revenue drivers. In the 2014 budget lockup, Lei got the biggest cut of the budget. Nearly a billion kina have been pumped into developing the city into an economic hub. As living standard improves for some people, others continue to live in urban poverty. Everything comes at a price, and for those who can't afford it, they look for alternatives. Some find cheap jobs, others stay with their relatives, and others end up in places like dumps. Here you get a contrast of what the government consider as priority and those that aren't the priorities. We have the capacity to call a working committee, a task force if you want to call it that, an investigative team, we have the capacity for that. We have the capacity to fund them and the makeup of them will be obviously the health authorities, our engineers, our you know civil works, whatever, our the LOs and whatnot, so that they are a team. And they thrash it out together, create a terms of reference. What exactly do we want to achieve? And then we fund that 
body that we've we've called out and then from there we take it from there whatever the results and the recommendations they give then we can say okay um, city council you mama lo disla or you papa lo disla or you know when we can allocate um, the findings and whatnot and give it and fund whoever is going to take responsibility. The lives of residents of Lay's second seven dump may seem a far cry from what other city residents are used to but it's a reality those in leadership and welfare must pay attention to. It is all well and good for us to be preaching about economic wealth our country will be getting. But what happens if we do not mitigate the effects of an economy flush with LNG revenue? Until next time on Talk Pixar, good night.